Necron Immortals. We are the Legates of Terra, chapter of Space Marines, and we had just come from a joint action with the Space Wars, the Legends. A sad affair, but a necessary one. Patrolling an outlying region, we had come into dark with a local void station on our way to our posting. A small backwater agri world, but it was witnessing a muster the likes I had never been part of. But now, I doubt any of our company will even get there. I can only hope the other companies are more successful, for we have been dragged into a nightmare situation. We had not seen the difference. How could we? We were not Death Watch. Not Inquisitors of the Ordo Xenos. So we had no idea what was being unleashed on us. Many believe that war is about grand maneuvers, clever feints and counters, ambushes, artillery and open fields. It is not. At least, not for me. I am a Stutties, but I am not of rank so I get to enjoy the purity of my position, the clarity of my role. I am an angel of death. I kill in the name of the Emperor, my chapter and my race, humanity. I will kill more of them than they kill of us. Usually, a lot more. It was what I was born to do, what I was bred, then tested, then altered, then armed to do. I am the ultimate expression of humanity's wrath outside of the Ten Thousand. Only they are deadlier than we, the Space Marines. Yet today, I meet my match. The metal monsters came, advancing fast. They dodged most of the outer relays and defenses, so they hit hard. Approaching under a type of drive, we had issues trying to track at all. We had only hours before their advent. Coming down without assistance of transport or drop pod. Their screeching sickles out the skies just dipped down and shot some ray at the grounds, and there they were. Hundreds of Necrons. As the strange ships zipped across the landscape, they deposited units near everywhere they passed. On ledges, inside buildings, onto the walkways. It was impossible to predict where they would erupt from next. A frantic landscape, an unpredictable foe. We relied on our training and the Codex Astartes. It worked well at the start. Devastator and Hellbuster squads took as many of their fighters out of the air as was possible. We created cull zones with overlapping bolter and specialist weapon fire. We redeployed and were flexible. But it did not go as intended. For we predicted the hordes of metal to walk at us, as they usually did. Endless tides of monstrosities that would oft get up, even after direct bolter hit smashed their chromatic skulls. But not today. For the units they beamed into our defences could not have been more different. Just as tough, perhaps more so. But they moved, acted, fired, repositioned as swiftly and easily as we did. It was like looking into a mirror. Blasphemy, some might say, but I could not help thinking it. It was in their timing more than anything else. They were elite warriors, of that I could swear, for their small unit tactics were impressive. When one fired, another advanced. When we pushed at them and proved our chainsaws could make short work of them, they kept us at a distance. Where we tried to use the terrain to our advantage, they seemed to outmaneuver us at a whim. Nor were they armed as their slower copies, for their hand weapons fired a blast of similar properties, but far more effective. Shots that would have flayed layers from our armor now hit with such corrosive power that they tore through our ceramite and slew those within. None of it makes sense. We were always told the Necron are mindless, but my adversary is far from that. Our respective squads destroyed in a furious engagement I expected him to slow down or become more predictable. 
but no. It is like being hunted by an iron hand. He does not tire. He never sits still who is stalking me or who is pushing me. It's just he and me now, hunting each other through dead corridors of twisted metal. To be continued. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and units of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. And today, we shall be taking a brief look at one of the most experienced and ancient of all warriors presently active in the entire Warhammer galaxy. Of course, I can only be speaking of the Necron Immortals. Now many believe that these are just tougher, better equipped Necron warriors. Although they do indeed have a better structure and equipment, this is far from the entirety of the situation, as we are about to hear. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Immortals. The Immortals were the favoured servants of the Necron dynasties in ancient days, and now form the vanguard of their undying legions. When the Necrons first conquered the galaxy, they did so through the unfaltering and implacable onslaught of legion after legion of Immortals. These were the very elite of the Necrontier armies, and are the true fighting strength of the Necron dynasties. Hardened veterans of ancient wars, born anew in tireless, undying Necrodermis bodies. Still able to think and respond with a chill echo of intelligence, their martial power remains undimmed, as does their unflagging loyalty. Within the engramic circuitry of each mortal, there lingers a spark of the biological soldier he once was. Though heavily suppressed by the obedience protocols of its noble master, an immortal can remember the triumph of the kill and the pleasure of humbling its foes. The transition from mortal flesh to undying alien metal has only deepened the immortal's hatred of their enemies. Stripped of weaknesses such as remorse and pity, and bereft of any fear of death, an immortal kills without hesitation. For millions of Terran years, the Immortals were a scourge upon all who stood between the Necrons and galactic domination. Now, the Immortal Legions are but an echo of what they once were, for countless trillions were destroyed in the final days of the war in heaven, yet billions more survived, and now wait only to be awakened from their tomb worlds to begin the reconquest of the galaxy for the Necrons. An Immortal's only desire is to enforce the will of his Necron overlord, and reclaim the glory of the Necron Empire. Roll. As the shock troops of a Tomb World's armies, immortals have a far wider range and depth of reaction than normal Necron warriors, for they have retained much of their tactical and strategic experience from eons ago. Indeed, in many ways, the biotransference to machine bodies and minds only sharpened the immortal's ability to prosecute war in an efficient fashion. Left to their own devices, a phalanx of immortals continues to strive for victory using every tactic and stratagem at their disposal. This is not to say that immortals do not have shortcomings. Most profound is the fact that they are incapable of learning and adapting to new means of battle. On the rare occasions when immortals are presented with a battlefield situation that cannot be conquered by ancient tactics, they will apply the counter-strategy they consider the closest match, regardless of its ultimate suitability. Fortunately, such instances are unusual, for, no matter the advances in technology, conflict has changed little in the eons since the war in heaven. Immortals are capable of speech, albeit in flat and emotionless tones that are even more soulless than the hollow voices of the Necron overlords. This enables them to not only provide clinically precise battlefield reports to their superiors, but also to issue orders to Necron warriors, a factor that often increases the efficiency of the entire battlefront. 
Outside these parameters, immortals are, at best, limited conversationalists, often falling prey to recursive loops of logic and procedure in place of conveying any truly relevant information. If presented with an inquiry or concept beyond its ancient understanding, an immortal simply does not respond. This trait only serves to encourage the more arrogant Necron overlords in their rambling and rhetorical soliloquies. This ensures that a Nemesaur's pre-battle address to his legions can go on for an interminably long time, as he scours his immortal silence forms for some glimmer of understanding and they, with a patience born of complete incomprehension, stare straight back, waiting for the order that will cast him into the maelstrom of combat once more. What immortals lack in the flexibility of approach, they more than make up for in durability and firepower. Immortals are more thickly armoured in necrodermis than normal warriors, and can weather a storm of heavy bolter or assault cannon fire with little more to show for it than fresh carbon scoring on their already time-worn frames. Even should an immortal be felled, its threat is not ended for its auto-repair systems are, if anything, even more efficient than the baseline of Necron warriors. Few foes can withstand the immortal's return fire so easily. A single shot from one of their double-barreled gorse blasters can punch through most types of armor to strip flesh from bone, and the closer the immortals come to their target, the shorter the interval between blistering volleys. At that point, all the foe can do is dive for cover, but this offers only a fool's hope of survival. None can hide from the immortals. The gorse blasters will scour every nook and cranny until nothing remains but floating ash on the wind. In life, immortals were the professional soldiery of the Necrontier Empire. In death, they surpassed the Necron warriors in nearly every way. The training and experience in combat survived the process of biotransference undiminished and immortals seem to have retained a brighter spark of intellect than their less favoured brethren, although only in regard to the practice of war. Outside of combat, immortals display about as much personality as a monotask servitor. Immortals are typically armed with gorse blasters, weapons even deadlier than the gorse flares used by Necron warriors. In one recent incident, however, a brother Janos of the Crimson Fist chapter reported that his Death Watch kill team encountered immortals within the Jericho Reach, armed with an entirely different sort of weapon, one that emits crackling electrical blasts hot enough to melt ceramite and capable of arcing between multiple targets. These weapons caught the kill team entirely off guard, as a single glancing hit on one battle brother could prove lethal to another. This unexpected development nearly cost the mission, and it was only through the noble sacrifice of Brother Lars that the Immortals were defeated. Immortals are similar in appearance to Necron warriors, but with larger, broader bodies and spines that jut grotesquely upward from their backs. Immortals also possess faster reflexes, and the movements are not so ungainly as warriors. When combined with their potent skill in combat, this makes for a foe that can pose a grave threat to even a Death Watch kill team. War gear. Gorse Blaster. Gorse weapons are the most common of all weaponry carried by the Necron soldiery and vary in appearance. Unlike more conventional directed energy weapons, a gorse projector does not deliver a cutting beam of coherent subatomic particles or bolt of electromagnetic force. Instead, it emits a molecular disassembling beam capable of reducing flesh, armor, and bone to their constituent atoms. Necron Immortals commonly utilize the double-barreled Gorse Blasters, though some may be armed with the Tesla Carbine. Tesla Carbine. A Tesla weapon unleashes a bolt of living lightning that crackles from foe to foe after hitting its target, charring flesh and melting armor. Tesla bolts feed off the energy released by the destruction, and the lightning discharge becomes more furious with every fresh arc. These weapons have been named by the Imperium after the ancient Terran scientist Nikola Tesla, who was the first human known to experiment with this type of weapons technology, which was referred to colloquially as a death ray. A Tesla carbine is the weakest version of this weapon, 
and is portable by elite infantry like the Necron Immortals. End quote. Now I adore the Immortals. I know I say that a lot, but what can I say? I'm a Warhammer fan. I have only recently, well in my mind anyway, begun a Necron army, and there has been one massive takeaway from playing all of my new units. The Mortal is not the Necron Warrior, but a smaller unit. Their extra range, extra toughness and armor mean they are far more difficult to remove from the battlefield and, due to this extended range, can be left to guard mid to back rank objectives with confidence. For me, as the incorrigible dreamer that I am, I respect my units of immortals far more than the warriors. The practical automata of the Necron warriors are my chaff, my endless legions marching ever onward, too cruel to ever stop, too stupid and without will to be broken or even slowed down. But for me, my immortals are the true warriors of my dynasty, for they fight with verve and tenacity. I can imagine them calculating the perfect moment, perfect trajectory, to fire their gorse blasters or tesla carbines. And like a mini destroyer, they can take pride in their work, gain joy from the kill. They can act independently of the rewards and are the true terror of the Necrons. For they may not be able to learn, as their minds are not capable of this anymore, but they have millions of years of experience, thousands of battles fought and won. They are the best heavy infantry a Pharaon could command, and a dire threat to mine enemy, be they human, Tau, Eldar, Orc, or Tyranid. For in their end, the legions of the Necrons are unstoppable, and inevitably, we will again rule the stars. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to Necron Immortals. If so, then please consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. If you see the worth in what we are doing, then do also consider joining our Patreon, or giving the video a share if that is beyond your present scope. It would be a great boon. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Doodle.